So I was talking about this contents map. This is what we did so far. And this is the closure we need to do. This is what we did so far. So which one is better study design? What do you think? Quantifiable or qualitative? Or a specific outcome like a blood test, x-rays, MRIs, and general outcomes like a pain scale or how happy you are, how satisfied with my class. It's a very general outcome, isn't it? And controlled experiment versus broad experiment in a real practice. And fix the points and maneuver in an acupuncture study versus various methods for individuals. This is controlled environment. So researchers should use same point for all the subject that makes it objective and reproducible. So what is the virtue of experiment? It should be reproducible. But the later one, various methods for individuals, it looks like better for the patient, but I don't think it is a good idea for the research because it is not reproducible. So why did you take those points? If you ask the researcher, he will answer in a very ambiguous terms, like uh, his constitution and his pattern diagnosis. So it makes it almost impossible to be reproduced. Am I right? So what do you think? Which one is better? Which one is your style? And my style is in the middle. Do you know about any RCTs that provide evidence that we should use RCTs? I'm sorry, but we don't. And this is controlled condition and the depiction of a controlled condition. So we do the experiment with the rats, rabbits, and chimpanzees, and even with humans. But do you think our human can react just like normal in this cage? So strictly controlled condition, less contamination. Contamination means not by the germs, but by the bias. An effective way of validating the causality of independent and dependent variable. And more strict, the controlled condition get less likely to be happen in real life. And what is a real life condition? Complex intervention. So it depends individual to individual. individual. And it can be multi-centered and hard to isolate the variables, explanatory variables, and lose broad sample selection, less internal validity with more confounding. Let me tell you about internal validity and external validity. And this is internal validity. We can make it strong, higher internal validity by controlling all the environment. So there's less contamination inside of the study. That is called internal validity. And external validity is something we can apply in a real life, just like as the experiment is done, we call that high external validity. So external validity means things what we did in the experiment is applicable to the real life. So usually internal validity and external validity doesn't go together. If external validity is high, internal validity is low. Making perfect balance is important. The restrict controlled condition where they are conducted leads to low generalizability, means higher external validity because they are performed in condition, very unlike condition, very different from real life, like the man in a cage. Conversely, real life studies inform an effectiveness of treatment that is measure of extent to which an intervention does what is intended to do in routine circumstances. The real life trials have high generalizability, but low internal validity. So what, what is this real life trial? This is a little bit complicated word. It is similar to RCT, but this trial is conducted on real life in an actual practice with the actual patient. Typical example of a real life trial is fourth clinical trial. Usually the fourth clinical trial is real life trial. So limitation of RCT. This is the example of limitation of RCT. Major spray vaccine flu vaccine. It was so wonderful in RCT, in a controlled condition. But when they apply this in a real life, it was not effective at all. They cannot explain why. What is the difference between real life and conducted experiment?
let's suppose you have a very painful acupuncture technique and it, it is really effective for what? Just common cold. So you got to experiment at RCT, great result with your painful acupuncture. Think about you applying that in a real life. It's just cold. You will get better in just a couple of days. Will you go on that extremely painful acupuncture like this? You won't. So real life is different from controlled condition. The surgery was successful, but the patient died. Well done, brilliant surgery. Shame, patient died. This is what happened in an experiment. Wow, the painful acupuncture worked great in common cold. Why don't you apply that in a real life? And you know what? A lot of researchers facing very strict and objective data, like uh, how surgery was done, how biomarker was changed. A patient might be ongoing extreme pain or very poor quality of life, even though their biomarkers are improved or surgery was successful. Let's think about your judge in a Sunday TV show. Which side will you choose, experiment or real life? With 25 sample, five fixed point with all same maneuver, one month follow-up, very objective outcome, quantifiable, x-ray, blood test, with 250 sample, actual treatment, so all different acupuncture points, three years follow-up, various outcomes like uh, how happy you are. So which one will you choose? So far, last nine weeks, we learned this way of research. This side of research, objective these days, research are changing to this direction, close to real life. I can say this is more like a natural science, laboratory science, and this one is more like a humanistic and social science. What is real? Your friend is challenging you, really? It seems like exaggerating. I saw it, or many people saw it. That is observational study. So it is a very weak evidence, right? This is weak. So your friend might challenge you, your eyes can deceive you. So you conducted experiment. This is really what I try to insist. See this result and your friend will challenge you. Hey, it was just an experiment under controlled environment. That is not real life. It can prove your point. Then you might conduct another experiment in a real world, like pragmatic RCT. This is the term we use, pragmatic RCT. This is a type of RCT conducted in real life. And your friend still not satisfied that is still experiment. That is not real life. Even though you pretended it is real life, but that was experiment too, then you are get really pissed off. Then you collect the data from all over the world. Then you will show that to your friend. Your friend's response is interesting. That is observational study. It goes back to the first research. Observational study have a strong point because it happened in real life. That's what exactly happened in our world. I think you got my point. And second one, yes, I understand the difference between controlling experiment and real life. But this one, quantifiable and qualitative, I still support this one. Quantifiable outcome is more important. Probably you might think that way. And most of the acupuncturists strongly believe quantifiable outcome is way more important than qualitative outcome. But there are some researches which called qualitative research. Qualitative research involved collecting and analyzing non-numerical data, what really happened in your examination room. We need this kind of research too in this study. Acceptability by acupuncture for low back pain, a qualitative study. The acceptability by acupuncture treatment, low back pain is complex and multifaceted relationship between practitioner and patient. Extremely important, usually ignored in modern self-efficacy and pain management in long term. Also imp important. Unpleasant treatment is related to the result. So unkind doctor can kill you. And science, modern science does not admit that. Take a look at this. I hadn't walked for two to three months. You know, pain does that to anybody, I'm sure. But I would have no qualms of setting out to do. What is qualms? Well, 10 miles walk, you know, with a 20 pound rock sack, rock, rucksack on your back. So I guess I was back to normal. I still watched the car, watched the car bending down and cleaning 
that will give me a problem, but it is not giving me a problem at the minute. So it is just real comment. And you can see, not statistically, but intuitively, what kind of effect this treatment has in these studies. So this is a closure. Grown-ups like numbers. Grown-ups like numbers. When you tell them about new friend, they never ask questions about what really matters. They never ask, what does his voice sound like? What games does he like best? Does he collect butterflies? Instead of that, they ask, how old is he? How many brothers does he have? How much does he weigh? How much money does his father make? Does his father make? Only then do they think they, only then they think they know him. If you tell grown-ups, I saw a beautiful red brick house with geranium at the patio, at the window, and doves on the roof. They won't be able to imagine such a house. You have to tell them, I saw a house worth 100,000 francs. Then they exclaim, what a pretty house. Yeah, it is true. But in research, we only care about the numbers and we ignored those virtues of the qualities. And the researchers these days start to think those virtues are also important and they try to recover that. But it is very shameful. Very few acupuncturists care about those type of studies. They are only chasing the rabbit they do not have. These are the virtues Chinese medicine already have. And the Chinese medicine, the study should go this way too, not chasing the numbers the qualitative ones, and real-life studies, the outcome studies. Those studies I recommend for my student. My student ignores, look down on case studies, case series. They only care about RCTs. You can write very wonderful, meaningful case series, case studies, and qualitative studies too, and outcome studies. Outcome studies usually take care about those ambiguous outcomes, like how happy you are, how satisfied with it, the treatment. So try to answer this question again. Which one is better? I hope this closure changed your perspective. I have two legs to stand on, reason and experience. Yes, experience can be the real life and reasoning can be laboratory science. RCT is important and qualitative study is also important. And the quality of life study is important. Laboratory test is also important. What we need is balancing to stand on both of them, like yin and yang. This is the last closure of our session. Research is fun. There are a lot of things to think about. This is actually the message I want to give you. All the research methodology class, they think this is mathematics. There's always numbers and statistics, but in research, actually there are humans. This is study about human. So we cannot think 100% out of human. Okay, thank you very much. Have your life to the fullest. Blessings.